Hey everyone, Drew here, and welcome back to DCS World. We're going to hop into the A10C today in order to become more familiar with its cockpit and systems. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Let's go! Alrighty, welcome to the Persian Gulf, my friends. This is one hell of a map, let me tell you. It is huge. I think end to end we're looking at nearly 500, more than 500 nautical miles edge to edge in the actual playable area. So it is, uh, it represents a massive amount of uh, land space that's playable and usable area. But we're going to go ahead and focus down on uh, the actual peninsula here and uh, Dubai in particular today. So we've gone ahead and set up our A10C2 on the tarmac at uh, Al Manhad Air Base here where we're going to go over our basic systems and cockpit functions, become more familiar with the new aircraft as it were, and then we'll go ahead and take off and do a little air tour of Dubai before we uh, return to the airbase. I think that'll be pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy, and a good amount of fun. So why don't we go ahead and hop in the cockpit. See you guys in a moment. All right, everybody, welcome uh, to the cockpit of the A10C, or I, I guess I should say A10C2, technically, as this is the the new updated module, uh, as I said in the intro from ED, and there's been a, a real big update to a lot of things, like uh, the textures changed. We're, we're going to go over the cockpit here in just a hot second, but let's look around for a moment. And they have done an excellent job on the textures. It looks nice in here. I mean, the A10C1 version looked great too. They just did a, a cockpit update to that not long ago as well. But it was all shiny and new. This is like weathered. I, I love the little random things. Like they've got like a rope tied across the front of the dash to keep, I guess, whatever that panel is <laughs> tied down. But uh, the broken in weathered look is definitely a lot better. It feels more lived in, you know what I mean? But let's go ahead and become more familiar with this, uh, this beast, shall we? Much like the K-50, we're going to start down here on the left-hand side. And I'm going to go ahead and lock our view as we talk about this panel. Boop, right there. Perfect. All right. So, uh, as you can imagine, there's a lot going on in the A-10. It's a crazy, crazy contraption of a vehicle. But uh, we can break this sucker down and make a lot of sense from stuff. So, starting at the back, we've got a number of different panels here that are mostly all related to audio and communications. Uh, like, this is a volume panel, for example. We've got uh, receiver relay changes. This is for uh, secure voice communications, which is not modeled in DCS for obvious reasons. This is a simulator, not real life. Uh, directly above that, conveniently, is the rest of our radio stack, which in the A10C2, this is not the final radio arrangement. Uh, we're going to get an updated digital radio, the ARC-210, but for the moment, we're still stuck with the classic uh, 184 radio, ARC-184. And then these two are the... or is that the 186? No, this is the ARC-184 and these two. So these two are the radios, the VHF radios, VHF-1 and 2, AM, FM, I believe is the arrangement. Uh, but that's Radio 1, Radio 3, Radio 2 in the middle, and these guys are both uh, old school 184s, I believe. Or 186. This is the 184, these are the 186. But then we're going to get a new system, so we're going to be able to keep this bad boy down here in this final VHF radio, but we're going to get a fancy new digital ARC-210 radio up in this panel here. That's why there's a blank space for it, but uh, it's not ready at launch. We're going to get that in another update. Moving over to the left, we see a brightly outlined box, which, even if I knew nothing about aircraft, would definitely tell me this is something to do with an emergency, given the white or the yellow and black stripes on it. And this is our backup controls for things like pitch trim and all that. Like, the, the big theme of the A-10 is reliability and redundancy. Right? Like, for example, in the aircraft, we've got two independent uh, hydraulic systems for the left and right engine, but one hydraulic system is capable of running the entire aircraft in redundant mode. So there's, there's lots of those kind of backup features uh, built into the aircraft, which is really handy. Directly above that, we have our IFF panel, which really not super modeled in DCS again, although it is clickable and changeable, and I'm sure that in multiplayer there is some logic to this, uh, but as far as I know, there's really no IFF implementation in D DCS world. Moving directly to the right, we have our throttle quadrant and the audio, uh, audio autopilot controls, which really basic autopilot in the A10C. It's got path hold, altitude heading, and then just simple altitude hold. There is no throttle uh, control or automated throttles like in, say, the, the Hornet 
which has an auto throttle. But that's uh, that's kind of kind of the point of this. this. is a very simple aircraft, but uh, this gets the job done. But let's talk about the throttles because this is part of what makes the A10 such a, a competent aircraft and fantastic weapon platform. Is its its HOTAS system, which stands for Hands on uh, Throttle and Stick. And what that means is I can operate all the major functions of this aircraft without taking my hands off the controls of the airplane. So whether that's dropping bombs, talking on the radio, uh, employing a data link, sending a message to another uh, wingmate, wh whatever those functions are, chances are I can do that without taking my hands off the control surfaces, which is great. Really, really handy. But let's go ahead and talk about the throttle. So for me, editing this, Future Me, go ahead and slap up a picture of the throttles and we will talk about all of the different functions that we've got here, which I'm actually going to put up my own notes, if you guys give me two seconds. And we're going to look at this. So the throttle is really interesting in that uh, they basically took the, the part of the uh, F-15 Strike Eagles throttle and, and adapted it into, into this guy, if I'm not mistaken, which is pretty cool. And... Uh, We've got, starting on the uh, the left throttle, we've only got a limited number of controls. We've got a flip-up pinky switch, and that controls our lights. And then we have a left throttle button, a single red button there. And that button controls our ability to come in and out of autopilot without actually having to use the autopilot controls once it's been actually set up the way you want it. And then moving over to the right throttle, we actually have the meat and potatoes of the throttle controls. We've got our slew control, which as you can probably guess is for slewing around things like the targeting pod or moving your cursor on the moving map display. And then right next to it, we have what's called the coolie hat, which is one of the first weirdly named hats on this control setup. And the coolie hat is what we use to switch between which display we're, we're selected and using, or sensor of interest as we call it. Uh, be that an MFD with a Maverick display, the moving map, the targeting pod, our HUD, or the brand new helmet mounted queuing system, which we'll talk about in a hot moment. Uh, and that's how you switch around with those kind of functions. And there's different functions, whether you hold it long or short um, and whatnot. We'll, we won't get into all those little uh, nuances at the moment because it'll, it'll take forever. Moving on to the side of throttle, starting at the top, we've got our mic selector switch, pretty straightforward. Speed brake switch, which is again, pretty straightforward, controls the speed brakes. And then we've got two weirdly named switches again, the boat switch and the china hat. And these are again, dedicated functions for controlling sub uh, assist, uh, sensor systems, I should say, right? Uh, on the boat switch, we can use that to switch between our camera, CCTV modes and uh, FLIR modes on the TTP. Uh, the china hat can be used for things like uh, slaving your Maverick to a currently designated target, stuff like that. It's kind of quick management functions and uh, changing our field of view and whatnot. So pretty pretty uh, straightforward once you understand them, but there is a lot of nuance to what modes you're using and, and how you're employing them. But let's go ahead and let's talk about the stick since we're talking about the HOTAS right now. And the stick itself has the remainder of all of our controls, as you would have guessed. Uh, fairly standard, we've got a trim hat up top, and then our pickle or weapon release button. Obviously, we've got a two-stage trigger, as you would expect on most modern jets. And then we've got our actual useful switches for the rest of our control, the TMS, DMS, and CMS switches, which stand for target management switch, TMS, data management switch, DMS, or display management, depending on your, on your lingo. And then the countermeasure switch. Uh, the countermeasure switch is fairly self-explanatory. It controls all of our countermeasures. But the TMS and DMS are how we're going to manipulate certain uh, screens in terms of what we're targeting, what's next selected waypoint. For example, uh, using our DMS switch on the HUD up and down changes our, our steer point or waypoint. So you guys kind of understand more or less where we're going with that. It's used for data manipulation and then obviously the other one's target manipulation. And then we've got our master mode control. Well, that's pretty pretty straightforward. That swaps us between navigation, guns, and all that kind of jazz. And a nose wheel steering button. And then below, there's like an emergency disengage uh, paddle below that, but that's just for emergency. Uh, we call autopilot disengage, if I'm not mistaken. All right, let's talk about the rest of the aircraft here. I'm gonna recenter. Oh, damn thing cuts in and out. Come on now. All right, let's go ahead and recenter our tracking here. Zoom back out. And let's go ahead and talk about the consoles. So starting on the left-hand side, 
we've got our gear indicator, lever, flaps, uh, gear, sorry, gear lever indicator and flaps indicator. Right next to that, we have our master armament panel that controls things like our master arm, our gun arm, laser, TGP, uh, all the power for our, our uh, radios and uh, combat computer and whatnot. Directly to the right, we've got our standby ADI, our radio uh, frequency repeater, a clock, uh, I believe that's our AOA indicator down there on the bottom, and then going up, we've got our speed, RWR, and our left MFD, or multifunction display, which is currently set to the TAD, or tactical awareness display, it's our moving map, which, going ahead, we're going to select that, and I can zoom out a little bit and show you that. So there you go, we have our moving map. And there's a bunch of different information that can be displayed on these screens, and it's completely customizable up to the pilot. But at default, on the left-hand uh, screen, we've got our map, our stores management, our ability to load and manipulate things, and our Maverick settings. Go back to TAD. Moving up, we of course have our HUD, which, you know, standardized HUD. We've got a bunch of information, though. The A-10 does a really good job giving you a wealth of information at your fingertips, which is just amazing for situational awareness. So beyond the standard pitch ladder, aircraft datum, and like Pipper, we get things like our HUD box, or our steer point box rather, speed, altitude, uh, the actual degree of where the aircraft is pointed on the pitch ladder. So if you're somewhere between say zero and five, it'll still tell you whether you're at one degree, two or three degrees. And then down here, we've got waypoint information, which is super handy. Coming down to the middle console, uh, or I guess we'll say this is the upfront controller up here as well. So, uh, very similar to the Hornet, it's a scratch pad. Use it to enter target information, laser codes, all that kind of jazz. Moving down, we have our uh, RWR, and, or sorry, not RWR, our countermeasure display repeat. That'll show things like our chaff and flare and whether or not our uh, countermeasures are active, our jammer settings, and our missile warning system. Directly below that, standard ADI and the HSI. Uh, down here, we actually used to have the T uh, the TISIL panel, which was for your uh, standby laser sight guidance, like for the with the Pave Penny Pod and whatnot. But that's gone since we no longer have a Pave Penny Pod. And below that is a fuse panel. Uh, oh, and right below this is our navigational selecting. I should say that right now it's set to tech hand mode. Coming to the right, we've got our vertical velocity indicator (VVI). This has got our climb rate. Altitude indicator, the right MFD, obviously, and then our engine management section. So this shows things like our fan speed, oil pressures, temperatures, fuel temperatures, fuel flow. Uh, this is our fuel gauge over here. And uh, let's talk about the MFD right now. So this guy is currently set to CDU, which is a repeat of this little guy down here, which is the main CDU uh, display and input section. And that's kind of like the rest of the control computer for this guy. Uh, this is where you would punch in waypoint information, targeting information, uh, and whatnot from that guy using data link and all that jazz. And of course, we can see things like statistics on the jet on here, our message page, targeting pod, and all sorts of other stuff. And of course, customizable. Down here, we actually have our control for the chaff and flare, what programs we have. And this is where you would actually edit how many flares come out in a program, how many chaff, how long it goes, etc., etc. Our caution and warning panel, oxygen control, uh, engine and APU start. This is our power panel down here. And then we've got a bunch of navigation stuff like ILS, TECAN, our helmet mounted queuing system, which I'm going to go ahead and turn on. And we have a bunch of lighting control for console lights, floodlights, and all that kind of stuff as well. And there you go, and that's more or less the cockpit of the A-10C, everybody. There you go, if we look off bore sight, we'll get our, our first look at the helmet mounted sight. Which, much like the Hornet, which we haven't discussed on this channel yet, is just amazing for situational awareness. You can get so much information. Ah, oh, super excited, guys. But why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll take off with the new aircraft and uh, see what she's like in the air. Go for a little flight and... Uh, Call her a day. How's that sound? I'm going to go ahead and taxi out to the runway. See you guys in a minute.
All right, let's get ourselves onto the runway here. Okay. Get ourselves all lined up on center line. All right, all right, back in action in three, two. All right, again, we are set up here on the runway. Gonna double check our flaps are good. Everything's set, control surfaces seem nice and good. We're, uh, we're not really armed with anything today, just the targeting pod and our uh, countermeasure pod there, the uh, jammer pod. So we're gonna go ahead and hold both wheel brakes down. We're gonna go ahead and spool the engine up and hold. Now, there's been an update to the flight model. I'm interested to see how this aircraft handles now. Release. Keep ourselves center. Oh, yeah. There we go. Speed's alive. Over 70. Nose wheel staring off. Just using our rudder. We got rudder authority now. 120, 130, 140 rotate. And we are off. Gear up. Flaps up. Flaps coming up. Gears is rotating. Gears locked. Flaps up. And we're airborne just like that. Ooh, she does handle different. She's really, really smooth. Well, welcome to Dubai. As we take off from the airbase here, we're going to head towards the coast. I really like the uh, the dust effect like that. Very, very, very cool. It's not as colorful as the Syria map, but this is a fantastic map as well. And as you can see, once again, with that helmet mounted sight, just dope. Love it. Absolutely love it. Use our throttle back here a little. We're actually going to come down a little in altitude, too. I want to get low over some of these buildings. We'll take a little looky look. Right here, we're going to use our coolie hat left long to go to our tad. And zoom out so that we get a better picture of the coast. There we go. We're going to go ahead and go mark point number one. So there's our first steer point out there. They have done an absolutely great job with this and the lighting in here is fantastic too. Good job guys. Nailed it. Really liking it. Alright, we're going to go ahead and make a right hand turn. Looking very good. Let me go ahead to select number two. Get 
can see one of the fan camera with that uh, the D-shade building over there is the sail. It's a very famous building in Dubai, I think. Memory does serve. That's the uh, one of the palm fronds right there. Does it show it on the map at all? No. No, it doesn't. But you can see it from the air here. Yeah, that uh, very much looks like Dubai. I think uh, I think they should give this map a facelift, though. Add some more variety. Do a little more for the uh, the terrain. Because man, that Syria map looks so good. But this is uh, this is not like this map is bad. This is an excellent map. Do not get me wrong. All the boats in the harbor. Looking good. Well, I think that about uh, covers what we want to do with the A10 today. I'm going to go ahead and do a lap around the Burj. And, uh, find ourselves a nice spot to land. I think. She's not a fast plane. But she is a good plane. Oh, they've updated the water effects on this map too a little. It does look nice. Hadn't noticed that till now. Very good. Alright, let's go take a look at the Burj Dubai. Or I guess that was a Burj Khalifa technically. I guess. Or is that Burj Khalifa Dubai? I, I actually have no idea. Somebody can correct me in the comments, I'm sure. If I'm wrong about either of those. But there it is. Biggest build in the world, I believe. Tallest build in the world. It is truly massive. I will give them that. Oh, look at that weird guy over there. Like a twisted glass. Very cool. Oh yeah, look at that. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Alright, there's Dubai International Airport right there. I'm gonna go ahead and make another right hand turn. And there's our return point there. The wedding cake symbol on it. So that means it's currently selected and is our, our sensor point of interest, or SPI. So why don't we go back over that way. And set this bad boy down on the runway. I think that sounds like a good idea. Everybody can watch my terrible landing skills. put our, our autopilot on for just a second as we take a look around. Right, let's pop outside the cockpit for a second, take a look at the exterior textures. Mm. Mm -mm. Went with the Alaskan livery today. And uh, it does look good. I love the attention to detail, like the little damage bits on the nose from refueling. <laughs> so good. Very nice. Very, very nice. Alright. So we're going to come on in here. Start losing some speed. So we're going real fast. We're also going to adjust our trim to match. Here we go, initial position.
God, the situational awareness that you're going to be able to do with this helmet system is just bonkers. I'm really excited to be able to look at targets with my face and then just go, oh yeah, that's the thing I want to blow up. Target pod, seek, missile, seek. All right, there you go. That's going to be a ton of fun. All right. This is Polar 1-1 one, one on approach. Or what would be the official way of saying that? Remember this L... Oh, gosh. Here, let's go to... Let's actually go radio. And inbound. One, one. inbound. Radio communications, I do not know. Just gonna go right in for the request landing there. Oh. In field one one request landing. There we go. Center of view. Can we go ahead and put our air brakes a little bit of the way out. Flaps down, gear down, throttle back up just for a little bit of power. Gear down, locked three and green. Runway, and we'll just bring her in. So the nice thing with the A10 is that it does have an AOA indexer on the left-hand side there, that's very handy when you're landing. Keep an eye on our vertical speed. We want to bring that down a little and adjust our trim. I want to keep our eye on our vertical speed there. Bring her in for a nice, soft landing. All right, we're going to flare. And nose wheel down. Nice. That might be one of my smoothest landings to date, everybody. Well, I hope you guys found this informative and enjoyable. I know that, as per usual, I certainly did. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next time. Or the next video, I should say. I can't speak today. Thanks for watching. It. Blah. This, is, this outro is just a garbage outro. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.